Ladies and gentlemen, watermelons and hedgehogs. Let's take a look here at this question from the Oxford textbook, um, subtopic 4.1. This is a question about the chi-square testing used in ecology. So the question says, figure 16 shows an area on the summit of Kair Karadok, a hill on Shropshire, England. Probably butchered all those names. The area is grazed by sheep in the summer and hill walkers cross it on grassy paths. There are raised hummock with heather, Colonia vulgaris, this plant here, uh, growing in them. A visual survey of the site suggested that Dritidia delphus quarosus, a species of moss growing in the area, was associated with this heather hummock. So here we have the moss, okay, this is the moss tiny, tiny little plants near the blades of grass here. The presence or absence of the heather and the moss was recorded in a sample of 100 quadrats positioned randomly. Here we have the results and the questions with the marks for each question. What is the deal with this quadrant? What is this? So here we have an example of a diver a scientist diving, studying a coral reef with a large quadrant, and the quadrant is subdivided. The scientist is playing the quadrant here and counting the species in the quadrant, right? So here you can uh, assess the presence or absence uh, frequency of a species in this quadrant. Sometimes it's not as cool as diving in coral reefs. Sometimes uh, this is me in college, uh, on a rainy day, on a rocky shore, getting wet from above and below and everywhere, and <laughs> our tiny quadrant here, studying um, a community here in this rocky shore. But let's back. Let's go back to the question. Uh, the first question here says, construct a contingency table of observed values. So a contingency table is this table here. You will have species present, species absent species present, species absent, and the totals here on the sides. So if I have heather present and moss present, that means both species, that's 57. Same here, moss is present, but heather is not, that means moss only, and the total will be a 57 plus seven, that's 64 quadrants where I saw moss, right? I saw the moss in uh, 64 quadrants total. Here we have heather present, but no moss. That means heather only, nine quadrants. Now, no heather, no moss. That is neither species, that's 27. I can add them together here. I have 36 quadrants with no moss, and the total will be 100. Okay, here we have the total uh, number of quadrants with heather will be 57 plus 9, that is 66. And here the total number of quadrants without heather will be 7 plus 27, that is 34. And if we add them together here, we also get 100 as it should be, because that's the number of quadrants we had in the first place, right? So it should be the same number here. You do this that alone will give you four marks. Easy. Now calculate the expected values assuming no association between the species. You say, well, no association, I would expect 25, 25, 25, 25, because it's 100 and I just distribute here. My job is done, right? Not really. And why is that? Because I have to have 64 I need 64 quadrants with moss because that is what I observed, right? This is the number of moss, uh, quadrants with moss that there are. So I need these numbers to be correct here, right? I can't just say, oh, it's 25, 25 because this would be 50 and that's not the case. So given that this is the total, what would I expect here in the middle with no association between the species? You take the moss times the heather and you divide by the total. 
right? How do you do this? Let's see this one here. This one is MOS present. So it's 64 quadrants with MOS present. This one here is header present. So that is 66 header present by the grand total of 100. That is 42.2. Oops, 42.2. Beautiful. And now you do the same for the other ones. Let's see another example I have here. This one, this is header, uh, sorry, moss present. That's still 64. But the header now is absent. Header absent is 34. 34 divided by the grand total of 100. That is 21, 21.8, right? 21. Point eight. You do the same for the other ones. That'll be 23.8. And here we have 12.2. Well, you don't need to do this for the other ones, right? Because if I know this one is 21.8 and the total is 34, well, I can just subtract and I have here this number. But you calculate the values and that's four more marks for you. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Portuguese, mayonnaise, no problem, right? So now you calculate the number of degrees of freedom as we were saying, okay? Let's say I choose this number here. If I choose this number, I have the freedom to choose this number. Well, this one, I'm not free to choose randomly because the total has to be 64. So 64 minus whatever I put here is this value, okay? And if I choose this number here, this one is not random either because the total has to be 66. So 66 minus whatever I got, that's this one. And if I have this one, well, this one is not random either because it has to be 34 here in total. So 34 minus this one, equals this number. So really, you can only choose one of those four values. You can really choose one out of the four values. The easier way to do this is to say that, well, let's go back here. It's the number of columns minus one. It's supposed to be an S here. Columns minus one times the number of rows minus one. Okay, this will give you the degrees of freedom. So here we have, oops, columns minus one times rows minus one. What would that be? That would be, I have two columns, two columns minus one. Well, that is one times two rows minus one. That's one as well, one times one equals one degree of freedom. You do this, you have two more marks. So I know now that I have one degree of freedom. I have my expected values. I have my observed values. All I need to be able to calculate my chi-square is the critical region. The next question asks you to find a critical region for chi-squared at a significance value of 5%. So let's take a look at this. I know that our degrees of freedom here, we have one degree of freedom. I'm gonna highlight this row and I'm looking for a 5% significance level. That means my result, I'll be sure, my certainty of my result it's going to be 95%. I'm 95% sure that the result is what it is. And here is the number, it's 3.841, 3.841. So we don't forget, bam, two more marks. Now you calculate the chi-square. Calculating the chi-square, probably the easiest part. I'm gonna put it here. Calculating the, the chi-square, probably the easiest part because if chi-square will be the sum of my observed value, I'm going to use here other columns, my observed value minus my expected value. And it's called chi-square, right? So I'm going to square this number 
and divide everything by the expected. So I'm gonna do this procedure for all four values here for all four cells and I'm gonna add everything together because here we have the sum we have to add all these numbers so what does it look like well here what is my observed value it's 57 minus my expected what did I expect I expected 42.2 I expected 42.2 and I have to square everything do not forget to square and then I divide by 42.2 because that is what I expected and the result here will be 5.19 5.19 so is that it no you found for one of the cells we gotta do it for all of the cells let's do this one more time we have here my expect my observed sorry is 7 but I expected 21.8 so 21.8 what do I do with this I square it and then I divide by the expected divide by 21.8 and the result will be 10.05 right you do the same for all of them okay you do the same for all of them I'm gonna write the number for this one will be 9.20 and for this one will be 17.95 okay I did this beforehand I did the calculations you can try and see if you have the same numbers what do we do with those numbers we add them together right so it's this plus this plus this plus these two so in the end your chi-square will be 42.39 0.39 okay 42.39 this is our calculated chi-square it's 42 very different from the critical region now you do this four more marks you're doing great now state the two alternative hypotheses h0 and h1 and evaluate them using the calculated value for chi-square so the null hypothesis H0 expects no association between heather and moss and the alternative hypothesis expects to be an association between heather and moss now because our calculated chi-square is much larger than the critical region at a significance level of 5% we reject the null hypothesis we reject the null hypothesis because our chi-square uh, calculated chi-square is larger than the critical region at a significance level of five percent you do this and you got four more marks what does that mean that means there is an association between moss and heather they are not together just by a sampling mistake or just by random it's it's they are associated right i mean if the sampling was very wrong then you know that would be uh, that would be a mistake but it's not just because of random sampling by accident it looked like they are associated no we did the math and they are very much associated so suggest an ecological reason for that why are they together why are they not independent from each other well because one of them is a moss right and the moss look how tiny it is close to the blades of grass the moss does not have vascular tissue okay that means it needs it needs shade it needs shade it can't be in direct sunlight here right it needs humidity it needs humidity even for reproduction prop purposes um, the reproduction of non-vascular plants it is water dependent so you need a humid environment and the heather can provide shade can provide protection against desiccation can provide humidity so if you say that you got four more marks and then explain the methods that should have been used to position the quadrants randomly so how can I 
position 100 random quadrants here, well, I can, for example, I can put a metric tape here. I can put a metric tape, right? The metric tape has markings, has numbers here, and I can put another metric tape up there. So I can put at the edges of my field, I can put the metric tape and I can select a random number. I select, randomly select this number here, whatever that is. And then I randomly select this number here, whatever that is. And just like playing Battlefield, you just cross them and bam, you have here uh, the place for your quadrants. You do this 100 times and then you have 100 random positions for your quadrants. All right, you do this and three more marks for you. Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know.